Eduardo's Gypsy Bears were a staple act on many American circuses in the late 20th century, and Eddie Steeples was proud of his European Roma heritage. When I caught up with Eddie in the year 2000, he was showcasing a crowd-pleasing chimpanzee routine on Kelly Miller Circus. But when I interviewed him in the circus backyard, I quickly discovered that the name Eddie was not the one he was born with. Okay, could you start off with give me your name and where you were born and when? Which name? Okay, the name, give me your, the name that you were born with and All right. the name that you, that you perform under. All righty. Uh, well, first off, I was born in Italy, somewhere north of Milano. Uh, sometime in the summer, probably, uh, because they were working in a grape vineyard at the time. What, what year was that? Uh, somewhere between 1928 and 31. Okay, you don't, you don't know for sure? No. Okay. <laughs> Take a number. <laughs> okay. What, what, was your, what was the name they gave you? Up at Humphrey Gore Carayan. Okay. Uh, they call me Eddie Steeples here. Okay, yeah, I can see why. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the papers that I have now uh, are much, much better now. I was born in Des Moines, Iowa, and my father was a carpenter, my mother a housewife, and I'm Jack Armstrong, all-American boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for, uh, for nomadic peoples that, that are not citizens of any particular country, right. papers are just very difficult, if not almost impossible, to obtain. Yeah. And, uh, is your family Roma? Oh yeah, very, yeah. very definitely so. Okay. My uh, my father was Calderes and my mother was Manush. Okay. And, uh, uh, what, where, where was your father born and your mother born? Uh, he was born somewhere in Bulgaria, my mother somewhere in uh, Romania. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, and, your, and you said that uh, uh, your, your family had quite a, a background with bears and other stuff. Yeah, as far back as, as uh, anyone remembers, they, they had bears. Not, not many bears. Uh, at the most, uh, at any one time, would be three bears, yeah. and generally not that much. What, what, did, they, what did they do? What, the, did, what did the families do? Uh, well, the men worked the bears, and the women hawked and told fortunes and did cures, and etc. What, what most of them do. Okay. Uh, tell me about your earliest memories. In, uh, were they of Italy, Eddie? Uh, yeah, most of them. Uh, Italy, uh, Spain, France, that area. What did you do? What, what, what were your parents doing at that, that time? Uh, my father was working with a bear. And uh, when, when there wasn't any work for that, uh, he'd sharpen knives or scissors and, or whatever. Uh, my mother uh, made flowers and hawked them. Uh, she would tell fortunes and, and this sort of thing. We always, but we always had, had bears. We had a, a Vardo. A wagon, you know, living wagon. Right. And uh, anyway, when, when my father would select a, a site for us to live to, for the week, <laughs> then uh, he would immediately put up a, a, like a cabana, canvas awning over it. Then my mother would go in into it and she'd sweep the, sweep the earth. She never could get all the dirt off of it. <laughs> but she'd sweep the ground, clean it up. And then she'd roll out a Persian carpet on it and she would hang velvet drapes around on the inside of the canvas. And down one side of the wagon, uh, we had a shelf there, and there was uh, like full kegs, about the size of nail kegs, but they were water kegs with a little wooden cap on them. And then there was a half one that was made into a bucket. And uh, as soon as she got everything all settled down, she'd take her bucket, she'd put some water in it, and then she'd go out with a big spatula, and she'd look around on the ground for the perfect spot. She'd slop some water there and start making it. She'd make this mud pie about so big around, about so deep. And when it got really, really sloppy, she'd scoop it all out and she had a thing that looked like a bird cage. She'd sit in there with a little tunnel on the end. And she'd pack all the mud around it, build a fire in the front, and about 20 minutes you could smell bread baking in there. <laughs> it was flat bread, but you know, still bread. What was the significance of the, of the purple drapery? Uh, no, velvet drapery. Vel velvet. Uh, so you wouldn't see the canvas. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, she'd throw cushions around inside and stuff, you know. But on the opposite side, the bears would be tied to the spokes of the wagons, you know, and they come up underneath, and, and if you left anything too close, of course, they'd grab it and rake it up underneath of it. Uh -huh. yeah. And us kids, in, uh, when it'd be cold weather, we'd uh, crawl up in the flank of the bear and pull his leg over his, 
Like as not, he'd wake up in the middle of the night and kick us out, anyway. <laughs> How many brothers and sisters did you have? Uh, no brothers, just two sisters. Two sisters? Yeah. And were you the youngest or the... Uh, how, how did you yes, I was the youngest of all, okay. yeah. Um, when did you come to the United States? Oh, when I was old already. Uh, yeah, let's see, in the early 60s? No, late 50s, mid 50s, somewhere in there. I didn't stay long. Every time they catch me, they boot me back out. <laughs> uh -huh. You know. How, how did you come to the U.S.? Uh, well, when the when the Nazis came into to Italy, of course everybody boogied, and uh, my mother and I came over on a Greek freighter from Morocco. To Morocco. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you live there during the war? Uh, no, during the war I was right in the midst of it. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I had just been married. Uh, on my 13th birthday, or what we call our 13th year, uh, we went and went to the festivals in Madrid. Every year in Madrid there'd be a festival or in Scarborough, England. And uh, a lot of Rome would go to whichever one was going there. And uh, when we got there, my father pointed and said, you see that girl? Said, yeah, I said, that's your wife. I was 13, she was 13. You talk about the blind leading the blind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of the few people in this country that uh, was a virgin when they got married. <laughs> yeah. What well, was it, pre arranged? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it had been done since we were a year old. Really? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, I think it's a good arrangement. It seems to me that your parents uh, have got much better judgment of selecting a bride for you than some youngster with an erection. Right. You know? Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you do during World War II and the years after that, then, Eddie? Uh, during World well, when the Nazis came into, into Italy, uh, they would catch the mayor of the, of the city or whatever, thoroughly uh, intimidate him, scare the hell out of him, in fact. And then uh, he would make, gather all the townspeople together and he would make speeches and they would tell him what to say. And they'd be standing over there with a big kettle of boom, 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 and the people would be standing there kind of mesmerized back and forth like that, you know? And uh, then he started talking about uh, ethnics, you know, the, uh, the, the lesser qualified people. And, uh, and he talked about Jews, and then he would talk about gypsies, and you felt kind of secure because you're in a crowd. But when you looked around, all of a sudden you weren't in a crowd. You were standing by yourself, and the crowd is all around, have backed away from you. What, what marked you at that time? Sorry? What marked you as being different at that time? Uh, I don't know. They just know. Did you always have the ear ring in your ear? Yeah, yeah. But did that mark you? Uh, possibly. Possibly that and the fact that I spoke whatever language I spoke, I spoke it with uh, the wrong accent. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. So. What uh, languages did you did you grow up speaking, Eddie? Well, my first one, of course, was Romanes, and uh, then my second one was Italian, and then uh, Spanish, and uh, Swahili, and uh, we, we picked up. When you go through a country, we'd pick up, uh, you know, six or eight dozen words and and uh, get by. We go to another country, then. Uh, we wouldn't use those, or, or sometimes we'd adopt a couple of words that we really liked, right. and uh, then it'd get added to to our language somehow. <laughs> yeah. Now, when your when your uh, family was traveling, uh, you told me that they uh, they had a routine when they would go into town. With your sister and you, what, what was that? Hmm? Oh uh, well, yeah. When we were traveling, my father had this old two-wheeled cart. And uh, at the end of the pony shaft, there was a rattan tied into a big circle. His dad just picked him up. All right, enough already. <laughs> anyway, uh, the old bear was so ugly, he had put a patch across his eye like a... Uh, let me turn this down. There. He was so ugly he had to put a patch over his eye because there's a big scar across there and his eye was all white looking and everything. So he put this, this patch and made it look like a pirate. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the old bear had to, would uh, step over the shaft and stick his head through a hole in a cowhide laced to the rattan and pull the little cart from one little via to the next. And my sister had on the back of a, a wicker basket with a fan-tailed pigeon in it and tied to the back was a Wallace goat. And when we hit a, a location at the edge of town. Uh, what was a Wallace goat? A wa it's, a, it's a goat with great long uh, horns, uh, oh, kind of ribbed. Horns. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it had long, shaggy hair. And it was a, a pie ball. Okay. Or what we would call a pie ball. <laughs> okay. And uh, 
Anyway, if you'd have those attached to the back, when we hit the location, she'd take the bird, she'd throw it up in the air and make a big circle around to come back to land on her head. Then she'd scoop it off, she'd throw it up again, and, and uh, then she'd hold a, a ring up on the bear for when the uh, bird would come to land on her head, she'd put the, the ring up and they'd fly through, and then she'd duck real quick, and the bird, of course, would miss and go around and make another, another pass at it. And uh, then she'd break out the goat, and the goat would do uh, pirouettes on his hind legs for a piece of bread. And uh, she'd have people hold up the, the fingers and the goat would count for she was cueing the goat. <laughs> and then they'd pick out some fat man. And uh, whoever's the most obese, that's the one that got buttered by the goat. She'd goose a goat, big joke for everybody but the victim, of course. <laughs> everybody get a big laugh at it. I kind of loosened them up a little bit. Yeah. And uh, then my father would pull out his violin and he'd start playing it. And the bird automatically come up on his hind legs and start stomping back and forth. And then uh, my sister would run out and put a big tambourine between his front feet. And he'd march into the crowd. And if you didn't put some money in the tambourine, he'd step on you. It only took one or two people. And uh, everybody got the idea. <laughs> you don't put money there, you're going to get trouted by the bear. So you repeat this act over and over again. Oh, yeah. On a, if we got there early, we'd do the first side of the one side of town. And uh, it was lucrative, we'd go to the other side of town, do a repeat performance, and, and sometimes on a good day, we could hit two of them. What, what did you do with the, with the, in the performance, Eddie? I shoveled a lot of manure from behind the bear. Uh, I did uh, tumbling and acrobatics with my sister. Okay. And that was really about it. Okay. Yeah. How old were you when you started doing that? Oh, oh, probably seven or eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, did, what did you do during the war and then after the war? Well, during the war, of course, I had just gotten married, yeah. and uh, we came back from Madrid, and that's when, when all this started coming down. They started gathering up Jews and gypsies, and uh, anyway, the uh, the Nazis had a problem with my father's birth, so they shot it, and then he flew into him, of course, like a darn fool, so they shot him, and uh, they killed him. Oh yeah, yeah, it was a machine gun. With what point here would this have been? You I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But before, uh, was this before World War II broke out, or during, during the time of the I, Spanish American War? I, was, I wasn't. There were no Americans there, no. No, there were just Germans and okay. and, and Italians. Right. And uh, Mussolini was scared to death of the of the Germans. Right. And uh, you know, I don't think he was a bad man. I think he was just a weak man. Right. And uh, anyway. Yeah. Of course, he meant nothing to us either way. You know. So did, did you and your new wife sort of? splinter off or split off and start your own family and uh, your own clan? No, they built us They built us a wagon yeah. as, as they had promised to do. Okay. And uh, we had moved into that and they gave us a, a single horse, Jumbo. Did, but did, they, did you travel by yourselves or as a part of a caravan or what? Uh, we didn't have much time to travel. Uh, actually, because when, uh, of course, she got pregnant right away. Right. <laughs> and uh, she had just had the kid and the kid was uh, only months old yeah. when uh, they put a great huge tattoo down our arms and uh, then they put us on a train and were sending us to, to Germany and as when they threw us on the trains we were passing through uh, France and the French underground derailed the train and the cars fell over of course when they broke up everybody boogied and ran but the flat cars stayed upright so they set up with machine guns and just raked back and forth there out of our family, 127, as far as I know, only about 16 or so of us got away uh, out of that batch. Did, and uh, did, you got away, obviously. Did yeah, you myself away? and my mother. No, no, she and the baby, they both, they both went. Oh, the, your, your your son had been born in the meantime. Your daughter. The daughter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, she had been born and, and uh, she was just months old. So they they machine gunned them to death. Oh, they just yeah. wiped everybody. Uh, yeah. Is it this is in the latter it, part of the war, or still? I don't. Early? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, these wars and things are not something we understand, you know. No. Uh, since we don't have a uh, a piece of land to fight over, right. uh, we don't feel involved in it, you know. Right. Right. And I've never been been to a place where they actually wanted this anyway. Yeah. So you know, it really didn't make any difference. Well, then, uh, circus life in the United States must be quite different for you then, as far as people wanting you. Well, I'm so used to it now, it's, it's, it has become my way of life, yeah. you know. Uh, I'm still nomadic. Uh, we had uh, 
we got pieces of property here and there, but we don't use them. We don't. I lived in a house three times in my life, one year in each one, and I really didn't like it at, at any one of them. Yeah. They're, 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 they don't move right, they're uncomfortable, uh, they're demanding. You can't own one. If you pay cash for it, it belongs to the government. You have to pay him taxes every year. So it's not truly yours. And, and all it does, I think houses own people instead of people own houses. Are you a U.S. citizen? Uh, I was born here, Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, okay. So you are a U.S. citizen? Of course, I have American passport and everything. Okay, yeah. Uh, do you, uh, when, you, you know what year you were naturalized? Your passport? What year you became? It says I was born in 1931, October the 13th. Okay. But in Des Moines, you, Iowa. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, there was a doctor who, uh, every time he had a stillbirth, he registered alive. Yeah. And then he saved these, and for his retirement, he sold them. Huh. The same immigration man who had booted me uh, about four times, uh, already he's like a caseworker. He knew me. <laughs> when I come in, he said, oh, who are you this time, you know? And of course, I'd put my new papers on him, you know? And he said, well, he, he would call off the name, whichever it was. And uh, he'd say, well, you know the routine. I'll be back in 72 hours. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the other times you say, well, sorry, guy, it won't fly. Uh, <laughs> now we got to find a place to send you, which is difficult because uh, you have to find a country that's got a, a quota so they can take you. Right. If not, because you know, you're not a citizen of them. Right. So whoever owes the, uh, the Yanks a debt, then okay, send the jip over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so when was the, uh, so under the name Eddie Steeples, you finally got in? Huh? Yeah. Uh, he, he looked at me and he said, oh, he said, that's a great name. Are you English this time? Of course. <laughs> and uh, anyway. Have you ever been to England? Oh, yeah, I'd been there. But well, the name Steeples is English. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, have you ever been to Scarborough, by the way? Oh, yes. Had you? Mm-hmm. And, and performed there? No, I didn't perform was that, there. Was that a, a, a gypsy gathering, a gypsy fair? Uh, yeah, they would just, they would get there. There would be, you know, maybe 50, 60 uh, Vardos there together wagons together yeah. and uh, people would just have have a big party they'd feast they'd have uh, weddings uh, you know did a lot of things there trade um, where do you live during the winter now yeah in palacios texas okay and you live on a boat right yes houseboat mm -hmm. no it's a sailboat sailboat mm -hmm. okay um, when did you remarry eddie oh let's see the first time was in uh Caracas, Venezuela, after, well, the first one, of course, was in Spain, and then the second one was in uh, Caracas, Venezuela, then twice in Mexico, and the rest of the time's here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your wife's your wife name is? This one? Yeah. Sylvan. Sylvan? S-Y-L-V-E-N. Where did you meet her? Uh, I met her in Dallas, or Dallas, Fort Worth, one or the other. We were doing the, the uh, Texas dates. The Texas State Fair? No, the Texas dates. Uh, they they used for, to, yeah. For Kelly Miller. No, no, no. Uh, let's see, Atterbury had had those dates back then. He put them all together. Okay. And uh, there was there was about a month of them. Okay. I mean, these were some pretty envied dates. Right. And uh, what show was that on? Do you remember? Hmm. No, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how many years? Uh, you used to have the barracks, barracks in the United States? Yes, yes. When, and you, you gave your bear to your son? Uh, yeah, let's see, I, I started out with bears here in uh, 1966. I had bears before that, but I, I wasn't working them, right. uh, what would you call, professionally, right. uh, until 1966. And I had the bear act in jungle land at the time then, yeah. Thousand Oaks, California. Yeah. And uh, from them up until 1992, I think, or 91, uh, I had bears all that time. Okay. And uh, How long have you been working the Chimp Act? The Chimp Act since 19... Huh. 17 years now. <laughs> okay. Is that how old the Chimp is? No, no, she's 30. She's 30, yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, is, that, is that a pretty long life for a Chimp? No, not particularly. Uh, in the wild it would be, yes. In the wild, 25, 30 years would be an old Chimp. Yeah. Uh, the oldest one I know of now is the one that was in the Tarzan series called Cheetah. Yeah. He's 62 now, yeah. but that's exceptional. Yeah. 
That's really exceptional. He doesn't work now, he paints. He dips his brush in the canvas and, yeah. uh, or in the paint and he makes a little squiggly. When he's out to, he dips his fingers in and autographs it. And yeah. Now it's worth 250 bucks. Yeah, right. Uh, does yours paint? No, what's unfortunately. What's, what's the name of your champ? Billy Joe. Billy Joe. Yeah. B-I-L-L-I-E-J-O. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, what do you like about the circus lot, Billy? It's a good way to make a living. It's a good place to... Uh, to be with your family. It's a great place to raise children. Uh, How many children do you, have you raised? How many children do you have? Uh, I, I've sired seven. Uh, I have uh, four living. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do, are any of the others in the circus? My son is the MC on Jordan World Circus. What's his name? Ari Steeples. Okay. A-R-I. And, and uh, he has a bear act. And his wife does a single trap or web. Mm -hmm. They have a son named Angelo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he's not in the circus, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Angelo, why, he's four years old. Okay. What does what he, is he, does he travel with you all? No, they, he travels with, uh, he's on a different show, he's with his father. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, with, uh, with? Ari. Ari. So yeah, it's he, Ari's son. So he's a grandson. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right, okay. And then I got two daughters in Arizona and three more grandkids there. Then I have a son in California and two grandkids with him. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do, uh, do you make pretty close friendships from, from the different shows you travel with? Well, there's not that many performers in the country, so consequently, if you're going to be in the show business any length of time, you keep crossing paths with the same people and you get to know everyone. Everyone gets to know everyone. And then we have a thing called Circus Report that keeps us yes. uh, abreast with what's happening. Yes. How many years have you traveled with Kelly Miller? This is my second year. Second year. And what other circuses have you traveled with? Oh, uh, let's see. I was with uh, Great American for five years, Allen Hills. Then I was with uh, seven years with uh, Carden. Well, it started out uh, Carden Johnson, and then Carden's brought Johnson out. I was with them seven years. I was with Dwayne Brothers seven years. With who? Dwayne Brothers. Oh, Dwayne, yeah. Mm -hmm. On the West Coast. Right. And uh, I did uh, one year with Gaddy. And uh, I've done like one season with a lot of different shows. Okay. Uh, what other acts have you done? Uh, have all of them been wild animal acts? Uh, animal acts? Yes. I, I've done other things as well on the same show. Like I did an aerial number for a while. I did sway pole for a while. Uh, I caught one season, well, part of a season, the trapeze. <laughs> we collided and I went through the net. <laughs> and uh, I did hand balancing. Uh -huh. you know, I was never a tumbler. I, yeah. Yeah, I got <laughs> Well, here on, on this show, last year, this year, you also helped with elephant rides, right? Well, I just take pictures on them. Take pictures. Yeah. Now, in Cardin show, I worked elephants. And uh, on Dwayne Brothers show, I worked an elephant there. I had my own elephant at one time from uh, Jungle Land. Okay. Yeah. Tell me what you, was Jungle Land, you say, your first job in the United States? Uh, no, that was the first one in any, of any consequence. Okay, what, and what, you were the superintendent yes. of the animals? Yeah. Or su superintendent of the yeah. animals? Of the park. Of the park. Yeah. And where was that located? Thousand Oaks, California. And when, from about what time was 66 that? 66 to 68. Went out of business. Mm -hmm. It went into uh, Chapter 13 bankruptcy. The government sent a man in to take it over for the last year, right. and uh, then at the end of it, they declared that you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then is that when you got into the circus? Uh, well, well, I I would go out with shows then and come back to Jungle Land sometimes too uh, during a slow season. Okay. And. Uh, then when we took, we opened another company right after that, one of the owners of Jungle Land and myself, and we opened what they called Animal Actors. And then uh, we furnished uh, studio work animals for studios. Uh, a lot of the game shows like uh, that's that Monty Hall's Let's Make a Deal and a lot of that stuff. You know. uh, and, and also for commercials and movies. Commercials, movies, yeah, we did several of those. What do you think of uh, what do you think of the animal activists, Eddie? What do I think of them? Yeah. I don't think they're bad people. I think they're misguided people. Uh, a lot of them are out marching for something. They have no idea what, what they're marching for. Yeah. But they, they, pre, they prejudge it 
and then convince themselves and their and their neighbors that that's the way it is, and then the neighbors uh, who are mostly followers instead of leaders uh, go out and carry signs, and and uh, they they actually, say, you know, the, a lot of them are the same people that. Remember 25 or 30 years ago, a bunch of barren women were out telling you how to raise your children? Well, they won. We don't raise children anymore. Now they go to school and they shoot each other and they don't have much respect for each other or themselves. And the animal activists, uh, if they have their way, uh, you'll quit eating meat. Uh, you'll turn your canaries and, and your parakeets loose. You won't have a dog or a horse, uh, you know. See, they talk about animal rights. Animals don't have rights. People that have rights are people that fight wars to gain this, and once their country is in power, then they're given rights for it. Uh, animals don't have this option. Consequently, uh, people think that, that we get these animals and then we uh, take advantage of them. What we're doing is extending, sometimes doubling or tripling their lifespan, actually. The wild's not that great. If it was so great, people wouldn't have moved out of their caves and, and uh, he wouldn't still be proposing women for marriage. He'd grab them by the hair and bash them in the head and drag them home like they did back then when they were wild. If they've ever been to, to Africa, they'll know that when the droughts come, the only happy animals are the vultures and the lions. Everything else dies. You know, it's just a, uh, there's not a wild animal in existence that's not wormy. Uh, pestilence is just, you know, it's, it's not a good life. There's nothing. Anyone who knows anything about any living things knows that it, animals are like people. An educated animal is much nicer to be around than an ignorant one. The same thing with people. Yeah. What do, uh, during, during the off season, what do you do? Uh, we a diver. We go under shrimp boats and uh, do underwater repairs. Uh, some of the shrimpers, when they get their nets tied up in there, when they get, to get their nets tied up, uh, we go underneath, take it out, because it's a lot cheaper for them to hire us at $100 an hour than it is to haul a boat out for $1,200 in a haul out. Yeah. We never take 12. Jumbo. Not me. When a big scene with me? No. I saw the Sunday. Now, you've already, you said you've already retired once or twice, right? Oh, just, just the once. Uh, when, when was this? Oh, back in, I think, 90, 91. Yeah, somewhere. but you couldn't take it. Uh, no, no, retirement is a, is a fun thing to think about, talk about, and make plans for and stuff like that. But when it comes down to it, you know, this is what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, besides, you can always retire in the wintertime when you're rich. Yeah. Until you go broke. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you enjoy, uh, you still enjoy the travel and, and the, the, the one day stands, Eddie? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, home is where your family is. My family is here. You know, my wife, uh, who I'm very much in love with. Uh, we have a life together. And we're together 24 hours a day. That way you know whether you like them or not. Yeah. You know? One yeah. thing about on the circus, there's no time, day or night, you don't know where your kids are. Uh, they're all there. Uh, today's play is tomorrow's profession. They, maybe they, they lose some of the things, they don't know much about stealing hubcaps and they, and they don't smoke weed, but uh, today's play is tomorrow's profession. The kids are out in the backyard and they're either bouncing on trampolines or they're juggling, doing hand balancing or, or climbing webs or, you know, they're doing something that's going to be useful later. And you see little kids uh, three years old and they're in their in wardrobe and kind of in front of the audience, uh, standing on the ring curve, styling the parents, you know. So, you don't see circus people on welfare, you don't see them with their hand out, you know. They know how to make a living. And the nice thing about being performers, you can perform in any language.